Today, I'd like to talk about something that I think is incredibly important, but really, really often ignored. And this is something that I've talked to too many students about, and perhaps the only thing where I feel like as a teacher, I flopped. People just aren't getting the message. And frankly, I don't know why. Maybe you can tell me, tell me in the, in the comments. Okay, this is what I want to talk about. Resonant speaking. Now, right now, I am speaking resonantly. And I can actually feel my voice resonating in my chest. I'm doing exactly what James Galway talks about doing when he says, get your chest involved, just like a singer. Now, most people when they talk are kind of talking like this. The vocal cords are very relaxed and they're kind of sitting, well, just kind of high up a bit and they're where they are if you don't do anything. And so, um, now, why would that be important? Well, because then they proceed to play the flute with their vocal cords in that same, the throat in that same position and shape. Okay, now, I'm going to move my vocal cords from this position to this position. How do I do it? <clears throat> By just moving them downwards a tiny bit. This is not a big deal. And I'm thinking more energetically. Now, I'm not going to blow one bit harder than I just did. hear how much more sound that is? We're actually using more resonances in the body. Now, when you speak resonantly, resonantly, you are practicing holding your throat. You are strengthening those little muscles without actually feeling like, oh my God, I'm working at it. You're just doing it. And it's just part of your day. Now, you could be improving your flute tone with every word you say. Think about that. How just how many more massive numbers of hours a week you could be positive hours for your playing you could do while you're doing other things when you're talking to people um, and about anything so and everything so now um, every flute player I have ever met who has the kind of tone that I wanted to hear more of had or has a colorful distinctive and clear voice. You never had to ask Julius Baker what he just said. You never had to ask Jean-Pierre Rampal to repeat himself. You never have to ask Paula Robeson what she just said. You never have to ask Carol Winsense to repeat herself. Um, and now I'm repeating myself. You never have to ask Claire Chase what she just said. You never have to ask Demar McGill. Um, you never have to ask Michael Faust. Um, it goes on and on and on. You never have to ask... Um, Jean Backstrasser, her voice is incredibly clear. And, and um, now, if that works for all those people with female voices and male voices, 
it will work for you. But if you are the kind of person who speaks like this very softly, and well, and that's kind of what your identity is, it's going to take a conscious effort. And don't try to speak like this and just speak louder because that will just really wear your, yourself out. Instead, bring your vocal cords back. It's like you're thinking about a yawn. Don't actually yawn. It's a, ah, oh, and that is all it takes. So this kind of position Okay, resonant speaking, you can do it. Make me feel like I'm on a flop, I mean, you know, gee whiz. This is such an important thing and you can, it can be transformative for your playing, but you actually have to make a conscious effort several times a day just to think, I'll speak resonantly now. You can get together with your friends and say, hey, let's talk resonantly. It's really funny. And how are you? Why, I am fine, but I'm extremely concerned. About what? Well, about the state of the world. What else might we be concerned about? Um, let's start with the climate um, because, you know, if that doesn't work out, nothing else is going to matter. Well, do you think playing music will help? Yes. Yes. It'll certainly help our souls as we grapple with reality. And if we're resonant, perhaps that resonance will not only go into our flute tone, but somehow into the world. <laughs>